By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a match between uh, my deck. I'm sitting on the left. I'm playing with a red, uh, sorry, with a black guardian beast deck. I've called it the beast's toys because it's basically uh, revolving around guardian beasts and artifacts, his toys. And I'm playing against a player who's built a deck around the card Disharmony. And it's a mono red deck and it's called Red Harmony. Uh, before we go into the match itself, um, I'm going to briefly discuss both decks. Now, if you'd like to go straight to the magic itself, to the games itself, you can click on the description below and there's a timestamp. If you click on the timestamp, it'll take you directly to the games. The deck I'm playing with today is uh, black and brown. So I'm playing with black cards and artifact cards and it, it evolves around the cards that you see on the left side here. Uh, the two guardian beasts there in your left top corner and in your left bottom corner, the four discs. Now, Guardian Beast is a card from the Arabian Nights. It's a 2-4 creature for one black and three, which is hard to see on this picture, but there's a three uh, right next to the uh, the black mana symbol. So black and three, you get a 2-4 creature, which is which is pretty decent. It's like a giant spider power, uh, but the ability is just amazing. Um, your art, As long as it's untapped, the Guardian Beast, all your non-creature artifacts are... Um, protected they cannot be destroyed they're indestructible basically so that means that when i use my disc for instance uh it destroys itself but that doesn't happen so it comes back into play tapped it does destroy the guardian beast though but that means i get two activations off one of my discs so that's great and my opponent cannot shatter it my opponent cannot disenchant it my opponent cannot chaos orb it talking about chaos orb it's another card that works really well with guardian beast because when you use your Chaos Orb, it destroys itself. But that doesn't happen because it's indestructible. So it comes back tapped. So with the Guardian Beast, it allows you to use uh, the Chaos Orb every single turn. So you can use it over and over and over again. Um, now when you look at the rest of the deck, uh, what you see here is I've actually added a non-bow in this deck without realizing it. So after this game, uh, I took that card out and that's the Ball of Suleiman. Now Ball of Suleiman is 4 mana. It's a card from the Arabian Nights and playing with the uh, revised version in this deck. Uh, when you play, uh, pay 1, you flip a coin and your opponent says heads or tails while the coin is in the air. And when your opponent is right, you get 5 damage and the Bottle of Suleiman is destroyed. But when you're right, you get a 5-5 five, five Jinn and the Bottle is also destroyed. Now, this word destroyed, that's where it went wrong in my uh, thought process. Because I thought, okay, it destroys itself, it's indestructible, so it's going to come back into play. So I can flip it again. So if I don't get the Jinn, I can flip it again. Or if I get the Jinn, it doesn't matter, it's not destroyed. This is not the case because the Ball of Suleiman gets discarded after you've used it. So the Guardian Beast gives it indestructible, but indestructible doesn't protect it from these sacrifice mechanics. So in other words, the bottle is gone. So I can only use it once and it's gone. I have no way to get it back. So that's not really the best, the best, um, the best card to be in this deck. So I've actually... Uh, Took it out after this match. Hey, but that's that's what happens when you build a new deck, you learn stuff. Now there's some more interesting things here in the deck. For instance, you have the Abyss, and you're probably thinking, why is he playing with an Abyss when you're playing with four Hypnotic Specters and two Guardian Beasts? Because what the Abyss says is that during your upkeep, you need to sacrifice a, a non-artifact creature. Now obviously, my Hypnotic Specters and Guardian Beasts are black creatures. They're not protected, so I have to feed them to the Abyss. Now, First off, um, I get to choose when I cast the Abyss, obviously, and I only play a one-off. Now, usually when I play a Hypnotic Spectre, my opponent is going to be brutal. They remove these creatures very quickly. They have to, because there's just so much threat coming from the Hypnotic Spectre. So I don't really um, expect myself to get into a situation where I have to feed any of my creatures to the Abyss. And in that case, I would just keep it in my, in my hand. Another thing is, the nice thing about the Abyss is when I put it on the battlefield, usually my opponents get really like, oh no, I have to get rid of this card, it's such a powerful spell. So they're gonna use, for instance, their Disenchant or maybe their Chaos Orb or another spell to get rid of the Abyss, a spell that they then can no longer use to get rid of, of another enchantment, enchantment or artifact that I have in this deck. Because as you can see, I'm also playing with three Paralyze and four Animate Deaths. Now the Animate Deaths are 
very important here because when you're blowing up a lot of stuff and you're using the abyss it means that the graveyards will probably be filled with goodies and i can use the animate deaths to get those nice beefy big creatures out i can also uh, get my guardian beast back obviously so four animate deaths is really necessary uh, in this deck i think the rest of the cards are pretty self-explanatory um, so this is the deck that I'm playing with today. I've called it the Beast's Toys because it's based on the Guardian Beasts and there are basically the artifacts are his toys. Now, uh, interesting here to note is that because I'm playing with a Demonic Tutor, I'm kind of, for my feel, I'm playing with three Guardian Beasts instead of two. So if I cannot find a Guardian Beast, maybe I'll find a Demonic Tutor and I can tutor it up. So that's basically how I look at it. So this is my deck today and let's look at the deck of my opponent. The deck I'm playing against today is a mono red deck. Now I do not have a deck picture of this deck, um, but I do know that it's called Red Harmony and it's called that way because it's playing with, I believe, a play set of Disharmonies. Now Disharmony is a card from Legends. It's one red and two and it says, target attacking creature comes under your control untapped. Return to former controller at the end of turn. This creature is no longer considered to have attacked. Play before defense is chosen. Now, ideally, you play this card when your opponent is attacking with two creatures that, let's say he's attacking with a Suchi and a Sarah Angel. And then you can play a Disharmony and you can say, I'm going to take over your Sarah Angel and I'm going to use the Sarah to block, um, to block your Suchi and both creatures die. So it's basically a classic two for one. So that's, that's what you hope to achieve with a Disharmony. So that's in this deck. Because he's playing with the, this harmony, he also has some tricks up his sleeve. Because what if I attack with a single creature? He has no blockers, and that's that. What can he do? Now, in that case, he has cards in there so that he can take over your creature and then sacrifice it. So there's one card that I know he plays, which is a safe haven. It's a land, and it's two tap. Remove target creature you control from the game. This ability is played as an interrupt. During your upkeep, sacrifice Safe Haven to return all creatures it has removed from the game directly into play. So basically, um, the Safe Haven is meant to, hey, if I take over a creature with a Disharmony, I can put it in my Safe Haven and it's basically exiled from the game, it's gone. So that's, that's I mean, that's pretty cool. And um, I know that the rest of his deck is just full of really flavorful creatures. I know he's playing with the Rock Hydra, so um, it's always nice. A lot of modern Magic players believe that Hydra has always been a green creature. That's not the case. The first Hydra, the Rock Hydra, as most of you probably know, is a red creature. So Hydra is basically a red creature type and not necessarily a green creature type. So I'm really looking forward to see some Rock Hydras. I believe he's also playing with Sheevan Dragons. Not sure, but um, let's let's go to the match and find out. Game number one is about to start, and I'm sitting on the left side there with my Guardian Beast deck, and the Disharmony player is sitting on the right. And I'm really curious to see both of these decks in action here. And there's the basic mountain from the Mono Red player, so he's on play. I'm starting off here with a Dark Ritual into a Soul Ring. Pretty good start, so I got two mana floating still from the Ritual. Tapping four in total here, and there is a Guardian Beast. Pretty cool. Wow. Not sure if it's that useful yet, but hey, it's already on the table, so that's good. But look at my opponent here, starting with a Library of Alexandria. So that is not great for me. Hopefully I can find a Sinkhole. A Disrupting Scepter, it's not too bad. For Disrupting Scepter, you pay three and tap, and you can let your opponent discard a card from his hand. Now, you can only do this at sorcery speed and that's an important detail obviously and your opponent gets to choose what card they want to discard but nonetheless hey it kind of balances out the library of alexandria discarding there that safe haven that we talked about in the introduction so it works together really well with the disharmony i'm choosing not to attack by the way the reason is that i don't want to um, open up my artifacts for any destruction because as soon as my guardian beast is tapped the uh, uh, my artifacts can be destroyed again so a shatter for instance could take care of that uh, disrupting scepter playing a second guardian beast being able to attack with the other ones that's the first two damage for my opponent the reason i'm not attacking with my mistress factory is kind of the fear for a lightning bolt i don't want to lose the land right now in the game i need a lot of mana because of the disrupting scepter 
And look at this interesting deciding to play a card here, meaning he's kind of going down in hand size here. So it's probably the best. And I'm attacking here now because he's stepped out. So I'm attacking with the Mishra's Factory and I'm taking care of a card in hand. That means he only has six in hand now, I believe. Or am I mistaken? No, I'm not. And it seems like he's going off the Library of Alexandria plan here and playing another Fireball. So that's pretty good for him, uh, taking care of both my Guardian Beasts. But of course, here it is. I have Anime Debts, a full play set of Anime Debts. And attacking again. And there's that Lightning Bolt I talked about earlier. And I believe I've decided to attack now because I have enough mana. And look at that. There's a Shatter gone. And that Shatter is useless as long as I have a Guardian Beast in play. And there, this is nice. This is this uh, land is actually a city of shadows. And what you can do, it's a land from the dark. And he's also playing a Granite Gargoyle, by the way, a beautiful 2-2 creature, one red and two. And you can pay one red to give it plus zero, plus one, so you can pump it up. Uh, but City of Shadows is a land where you can tap to sacrifice a creature, and then you can put a counter on City of Shadows. And you can tap City of Shadows and add X colorless mana to your mana pool, where X is the number of counters on the city. So the, the reason he's playing that card, you don't see it often, but the reason he's playing that card is, um, oh, and, and look at this, there's a Stone Rain here. Uh, the reason he's playing it is um, because of his disharmony. So he can take a creature of me, uh, take a creature from me in my attack phase, and then um, sacrifice it to his City of Shadows. So it basically has the same uh, function in this case as the safe haven. And there he attacks and there's a terror. And look at what he does in response of the terror. He says, I'm going to activate my city of shadows. At least he gets a little bit of value out of it. And I think that's something that people underestimate when you think about safe haven. For instance, safe haven can be a card that can save your creatures and you can get them back later. So it's, it's kind of like a protection uh, from, for instance, the swords to plows here. Now I've played one of my signature cards here and it's looking pretty grim here for the red player, but he is playing a Rock Hydra. Look at that. And is that a Beta Rock Hydra? I believe it's a Beta Rock Hydra and it's a 7-7 and that's super cool. And I'm playing Chaos Orb and I'm pointing it out and he's saying, okay, you've won, you've won. This is so much. Uh, you've won this first game and um, I believe we're actually going to sideboards and we're going to game number two. So this was a fun first game and so many cool cards here played by the uh, Disharmony player. Really man, playing a Beta Rock Hydra in your deck. Very cool and he had it on the board there at 7-7. Seven, seven. Unfortunately, me being the jerk that I am playing a Chaos Orb. With that Guardian Beast, that would mean I could use an Orb Flip, do an Orb Flip every um, turn. And I also had, of course, that uh, uh, disc in play as well. So just too much power here for me. Let's quickly go to game number two and see what's going to happen. Game number two is about to start with the red player, the red Harmony deck on the play. We didn't see a single Disharmony, by the way. There's a basic land and I'm playing a Mishra's Factory and there's a Desert. And Desert works really nice, by the way, with Lightning Bolt. And oh, this is nice. Stone Rain, this time it's very useful. Remember game one, the Stone Rain didn't do much, but in this case, I mean, it takes care of Library of Alexandria. What more can you want? And when he's tapped out, you've probably noticed that those are the moments that I attack with my Mishra's Factory because there's no threat from a Shatter or a Lightning Bolt. So he's taking two damage here, going down to 18. And... Do I have to discard here? Is that the reason why? Uh, and I do. <laughs> so that's why it took me so long. Discarding a bottle of Suleiman. The card we discussed. Ooh, and look at this. Strip mine. Okay, so he's already taken care of two of my lands. And I only have this one Mishra's Factory. Colorless mana. And it's very smart that he's taking care of my swamps because he kind of knows. He's playing with black. He probably has dark rituals. And... Um, Unfortunately for him, I, I found another Swamp there and I'm not picking three cards, but I'm just taking out the cards that I'm considering to pick with the Demonic Tutor. 
And I'm shuffling again, passing turn. And there's the book, the tome. And I believe it's called Jalum Tome. Somebody told me in the comments. <laughs> I, I always forget. You usually call it the little book. And look at that. There's a dark ritual into a hypnotic specter and an attack there with that mistress factory. And he's choosing to bolt the hypnotic specter. And again, this is interesting. So I'm attacking with the factory. He's choosing to bolt the hippie uh, because that's a bigger threat. So it's a good choice. So I kind of got a free attack there with my uh, mistress factory. Activating the Jalum Tome. Discarding a card there and look at that and animate that. So I'm taking it back. So remember, there is a minus one, minus O on the creature when you play and animate that. Oh, and look at this. This is powerful. There's that Rock Hydra again. 4-4 four, four Rock Hydra. This time it's the unlimited one. Really, really cool. And I'm really enjoying the flavor here. And he's discarding a card. Okay, well, that's <laughs> it's not very useful in this stage of the game. And there's a Guardian Beast. Um, but look at that, he's discarding a Library of Alexandria. Pretty useless. I'm playing a Guardian Beast here, he's attacking. Obviously I'm not blocking, so I'm taking four damage here. And he's playing a book, so he's got both books here. So he's got a Library, and he's got a Rock Hydra going on. Really nice. That Rock Hydra must enjoy reading. And there you go, he's losing a Shatter. And I am playing a disc here. I probably have to use that disc. And again, I can use the disc twice because of the Guardian Beast. He's attacking, taking more damage, going down to 12 here. And the nice thing for me is that I can activate the disc and then I still have my Mishra's Factories to attack and my opponent is empty-handed. On the other hand, I know when I'm activating the disc, he's probably going to use his book to draw that extra card. But I think I have to. So I'm considering now, can I just attack and, but I'm, I'm deciding to just to blow it all up. And obviously he's using his Jalum uh, tone. Or at least using his big book here to draw a card. And in response, he could have used the smaller book and I'm playing Oh, look at this. Now I have to use my disc instantly again. So I was playing my Disrupting Scepter. He's playing a Sheevan Dragon. Oh, look at this. This is cool. So here I'm playing that Abyss we talked about earlier. And he's playing a Chaos Orb. And this is just a crazy, crazy situation here. Um, but my opponent has no cards in hand anymore and I still have a couple. Teching here with both of the Mistress Factories, so dealing four damage here, which is pretty good. And am I going to win this on the Mistress Factories? And he's playing a Bolt on one, going to eight. And I'm playing a sinkhole on one of the deserts because if he gets a second desert, he can actually kill one of my factories. And he's going to flip, so let's uh, let's put in slow mo. And there goes the flip, and you can actually see the shadow. Look at the shadow of the card; that's pretty cool. Uh, and there it is. It's a good hit. And the interesting thing is here, he's choosing my abyss, and look at that. There's the beta rock hydra again. I'm really starting to to like this disharmony deck, and I mean. Okay, it's not winning, but that's just because I'm blowing up everything, but I'm really liking this deck. I mean, he's played a Sheevan Dragon, he's played a Rock Hydra, he's, I mean, he's played so many cool cards. He's played, um, what's it called again, the Gargoyle, Granite Gargoyle, which is a beautiful creature as well. And look at that, I'm playing a Guardian Beast. And he's attacking, and obviously I have to destroy here. And in response, he's playing, ooh, this is interesting. So he's playing a Dragon Whelp. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm just constantly destroying everything uh, just to get rid of single creatures. So he's playing a Dragon Whelp here. And it looks like we're discussing something. Um, I'm playing with four discs, by the way, so I don't know if you remember that. So I'm 
I'm really finding it easy to just keep exploding these discs and especially when I have a Guardian Beast so you can use your disc twice. So that means I've got like in an ideal situation I've got eight disc activations. I mean just just insane. Eight board wipes and I can even use animate deaths like you saw me do before to just get my Guardian Beast back and then I can do the whole thing over again. Let's see what I'm going to do now. Tapping five. Oh, playing a drain life. So I don't just want to use. Oh, and this is interesting. Ali from Cairo, I believe the card is called. And it's a zero one creature. And this card used to be banned, actually, um, because the idea was when people play with Ali of Cairo, it's a zero one. And it means that you cannot go or the card says you cannot go below one life. So you're always stuck on one as long as the creature is around. And back in the day, they, they thought, you know, we have to ban it because because of Aleph Kiro, everybody has to play with creature removal. And not everybody did that back in the day. Oh, look at that. I'm taking away his disharmony. Oh, I'm feeling like such an ass right now. But obviously I have my disc. I could have done that now, end of turn, by the way. Oh, but I probably want to activate the book. Yes, that's that's a good, that's the right play. And then I attack and that's that. Oh, and I would have found a fireball. Oh, that wouldn't have saved him, though. But um, oh, the Stone Rain would have. The Stone Rain would have taken care of his mistress factory, of my mistress factory. Uh, okay, so that's that's game. It's a 2-0 victory for me, but what a beautiful deck. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the red deck, the uh, red harmony deck. Unfortunately, we couldn't see a successfully cast disharmony this time around. And uh, maybe I get to play against him again and, uh, and we can see him do some disharmony shenanigans. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done yet. I'm hoping to reach a thousand subscribers as soon as possible. And uh, hopefully I can make that with your help. Please leave a comment uh, below if you ha saw anything that you think, hey, that's kind of interesting or I would have made a different choice or maybe there was a misplay. There are usually misplays in here. <laughs> but uh, but okay. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>